Uh, there we go. Got it. <laughs> All right. So FYI, we're recording. Um, thank you everyone for being here today. I am really excited for this skill sharing conversation on online gaming for libraries. So I know for years, many of us have been doing gaming and video games in our libraries, but the world of sort of online gaming can be really new for a lot of us. So we are very excited to have um, today's moderators with us and I will introduce them now and then I will let them take it away because they are really the experts. So we have Jasmine Riel is the teen services librarian at the Cherry Hill Public Library where she coordinates teen programming and volunteers, manages youth adult collections, um, young adult collections and supervises social media and marketing to teens. She is especially passionate about diversity and inclusivity in librarianship and literature. She holds a bachelor's degree of music in music education from Westminster Choir College and a Master of Information degree from Rutgers University with a concentration in school library media specialization. My own passion. <laughs> Outside of the library, she reviews young adult literature for Kirkus and is a frequent vocalist for various churches throughout South Jersey. Thank you for joining us, Jasmine. Yay, glad to be here. And Melissa Brin is a teen librarian at the Cherry Hill Public Library and an adjunct instructor at Drexel School of Communication and Information. She has worked in teen services for 10 years, developing dynamic teen programming, providing library use instruction and reader's advisory to all patrons and managing young adult collections. Her professional research interests include critical librarianship, youth digital transmedia literacy and diversity, equity and inclusion. She lives with her daughter, husband and dog in Cherry Hill. Yay, so do I. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's me. So many connections. Um, so I am thrilled to have them here. Um, and I'm thrilled to have you all here. And I will now turn it over to Jasmine um, and Melissa, who will sort of let you guys know how they want to handle today's questions and conversations and stuff like that. Um, and we'll get started. Yes, I'm so excited. Hey. Nice to see all of you today or hear from you or read from you in the chat. Um, it's great to be here. Uh, uh, we are not experts in online gaming, but we have been experimenting and trying some things and we're eager to hear your ideas and problem solve together if you've been running into any issues or have some ideas that you'd like to work out together. Uh, but let me share my screen with our um, presentation that we made here in the lovely Canva, which I'm sure we all love um, to use as much as possible when we can. Uh, it is lovely. So here we go, our, our skill sharing conversation. We really do want this to be a conversation today, whether you feel comfortable more in the chat or unmuting yourself as well. Um, we want to hear from you. We want to help each other. Uh, we'll share some of our ideas, but we, we have plenty of opportunities for us to discuss together. Uh, so this is our agenda for today. We'll start with some introductions. Since there aren't too many of us, it'll give us a chance to kind of hear from each other and also talk a little bit about of our um, experience with gaming and online gaming, um, whether that's in the library or outside of the library. Uh, we'll obviously have a program share, idea share, since like I said, it's still not too many people. Maybe we can just do that all together. Uh, that was our breakout room suggestion. Um, and then we'll talk about some learning experiences and challenges we've all faced. And then we'll wrap it up with our takeaways for today. So. I want to know, well, we all want to know, who are you? Um, so I'm Jasmine, I work at the Trail Public Library, I'm the Teen Services Librarian, and then I have a couple questions here you can choose from in terms of gaming. So are you a gamer? What types of games do you enjoy? Or maybe what games are you interested in bringing to your library through programming? Um, I always joke that I'm a gamer. I'm not really, but I really like um, life simulation, slice of life games like you'll hear us talk about Animal Crossing at the Cherry Hill Library a little bit. Um, I really like wholesome games like that, but I also really do enjoy watching gamers on YouTube. Um, I actually find them really relaxing to like listen to, um, and I'm really scared to play like horror video games, so I find it more enjoyable to watch other, play other people play them, <laughs> and I usually have those on in the background, um, but I'll talk about some of the programs we're doing uh, later. So Melissa, do you want to answer some of these questions? Oh, sure. So again, my name is Melissa and I also work at the Chicago Public Library, but I am a part-time youth services librarian. I do a lot to, but I do a lot because my background is in teen services to support Jasmine as a full-time teen librarian. Um, I am a gamer. 
I, <laughs> I'm gonna proudly wear that label, even though I think that I'm an imposter and I'm not. I like I have a gaming rig, like I have a gaming computer. I have like I our teens helped me build it. Our team helped me add a hard drive card through mm-hmm. our Discord, which was an amazing thing that we gave them volunteer credit for, which maybe I shouldn't be telling you now that I did that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but no, they were just very kind. So we wanted mm-hmm. to like say thank you for that. Um, the kinds of games I like to play, also like to play Animal Crossing. Um, I play um, The Sims 4. I play Valheim. I play... Uh, Fortnite a tiny bit I'm not super good at it <laughs> but I play it uh I also like regular like analog tabletop uh, manual like, tabletop games and I think mm-hmm. that that it's sort of overlapping now that zoom is happening like Dungeons and Dragons and stuff like that um like we've been offering like a Dungeons and Dragons online uh for a little while at the, at the Cherry Hill Public Library so um if people have questions about that that's something that we could maybe talk about as well um and we have been talking about uh, doing a streaming gaming on Twitch at the library. So these mm-hmm. are the kinds of things that we have been talking about. And maybe those of you who have been interested in doing it as well um, have some insights that you could share. Uh, and we also have been um, talking about, um, is that, oh, the podcast is not gaming. Never mind. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I see Yunyi from Princeton Public Library who likes board games. We can also talk about maybe how we can implement, I don't know, board gaming virtually somehow. I'll talk a little bit about like Jeopardy and um, that's something I'm working on with my teens and whether mm-hmm. it's gonna be in-person or hybrid or online, we can talk about that together. So nice to meet you, hear from you. I see Teresa um, from the Sweat Greensboro Library for Gloucester County. Not good at online gaming, that's okay. Some of us aren't. And that's okay. It's okay to be interested in it and want to do it at the library, even if you're not an expert at it. Uh, before COVID, kids came and did Wii and Nintendo DS and board games. Yes. Yes, I'm sure a lot of us probably have uh, video game collections that we can probably like promote, maybe with programming or, I don't know, do something interesting. We'll also talk a little bit about promotion and engagement uh, for online gaming at the library. Uh, yeah, love board games. Seen my daughter play Animal Crossing in some anime games and Resident Evil. I'm here because I need to learn how to do stuff. I like it. <laughs> awesome. Uh, yes. Bring virtual asynchronous gaming. Awesome. Awesome. Hi, DP. Uh, adult services librarian from Rivervale Library. I'm here to learn more about gaming as I do not play games. I love it. I love that some of you don't play games, but you're interested mm-hmm. in making it happen at the library uh, for whatever reason. And we'll talk about those too. Is there anybody who wants to unmute and introduce themselves and talk about their experiences of gaming? Or you can drop it in the chat, whatever you're most comfortable with. Well, I realize I didn't introduce myself, although, <laughs> you know, I should have. Um, so I'm Darby Malvi. I work for Library Lincoln J Programming and Outreach Coordinator. Um, and I'm mostly here to just host the Zoom, but um, I do want to learn about online gaming. I, like Uni, love board games. Um, the more complicated, the better. And like uh, Melissa said, recently been kind of experimenting with playing some of the tabletop games online. So like Ticket to Ride, if anybody has ever played Ticket to Ride. They have a really fun online version that you can play on Steam. Unfortunately, you do have to pay for an account, so it's tough to bring it to the library. Kaylee, everybody loves Ticket to Ride. It's so much fun. <laughs> it's the best. Um, so, But that's been fun to be able to do that with my friends like in over the course of the pandemic. Um, when we weren't able to get together, it was fun to figure out that we could still do that together, so that was nice. Awesome. And I see Jonathan here. Hi, Jonathan. No direct experience with programming. I love um, I love open world video games. That's awesome, which I play on console, PS4, PS5. I have PS4. I love my PS4, although I use it more to watch YouTube videos um, <laughs> since you can have all those apps on there. <laughs> but I do play some games. Uh, currently super excited about Horizon Forbidden West, which releases next week. Not a fan, or I am a fan of all kinds of games, both online and in person main area of interest these days is learning about libraries that are offering adult programming around online games. Mm. It'll be great to hear um, from different departments 
um, how you want to utilize uh, ga online gaming. Because you're right, there is it, there is a big focus, especially on youth and teens in particular. Um, yep. And as you know, Melissa and I are both teen librarians, so like that's our direct experience um, in public libraries with uh, online gaming. So great, it, I it love is... that we're from different. Oop. Oh, sorry, Teresa, go ahead. Sorry, I was just gonna say it is fun though. Like I kind of like it when the kids actually want to play board games. You know, like I feel like they're always online playing mm -hmm. stuff and like that stupid game Spoons. They love that. <laughs> I love Spoons. You know, right. And I think, you know, stuff like that, it's just kind of nice when they actually want to play yeah. that or Uno or, you know, something else besides always online. Yes. Yes. And we'll talk about some of the challenges, too, with online gaming and access. Um, and sometimes it's this, also that feeling of nostalgia with some board games and tabletop games. Um, but maybe there's some way to integrate it um, if you're still at a library that is closed or um, you need to find creative ways of, maybe you want to find creative ways of integrating technology into it somehow. Um, there's ways to do that, I'm sure. And um, we'll hear from each other all about it. Uh, so if anybody else wants to introduce themselves, feel free to interrupt me. I'll go to the next slide um, or you can drop your comments in the chat too. I think Michelle has yeah. her hand up. Yay. Yeah, my mic was not working before. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to quickly say I'm Michelle I'm from Anglewood Public Library. I'm a children's librarian and a big gamer. Currently playing Witcher 3, uh, Pokemon Legends, Ar Arceus, and um, a little bit of Apex Legends. And I used to have a really successful in-person Switch Club before the pandemic mm -hmm. at a different library I worked at. And I really miss having the middle schoolers, the tweens in yeah. at the Switch Club because it was a great experience. Oh, that's cool, Switch Club. Sounds awesome. Cool. I love it. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, so we want to hear from you. We, some of us have talked about this a little bit, but um, why, why should we even think about online gaming in library programming? Like, what do you think? Like, we kind of talked about it a little bit in each of our answers. But um, what is it about online gaming that is appealing to librarians uh, for programming? Well, I mean, I feel like the kids just, it's just an attractive thing to them. So they might not come in for a crafty thing or a book club. So you kind of have your different kids who are into different things. But, uh, you know, they want to have fun. They want to, you know, and these are things that might bring them into the library and then get them to do other things you know, and just socialization, being able to relax, um, learning something new. Yeah, and Melissa H in the chat said, accessibility, if friends or family move away from their home library, they can still participate. Um, I love that. I definitely have a couple of teens who just aged out of uh, high school and are still um, active. They still ask, can I come to that game night? Um, sometimes they just miss participating. They miss that feeling of being in a library program or socializing with their friends who still haven't graduated yet. Um, so yeah, there's definitely that need for connection um, or nostalgia uh, of being at the library, but you've moved on. Uh, Kaylee, I, I'm a teen librarian at Collingswood. Hi, Kaylee. Nice to, nice to hear from you. Nice to meet you. I'm oh, a core tabletop strategy board gamer. I love it. Skyrim. Yeah. yeah, I do D and D online with my library teens, along with Jackbox. Yes, we do Jackbox too, and we also do yes. have um, our D and Ds in person with teens right now. But yeah, they love it. It always fills up. Uh, our children's librarian runs Switch Mario Kart. Yes, um, I. That's your colleague Melissa that I wrote a newsletter, NJLA newsletter article about Animal Crossing. Uh, I included her in that. Uh, yes, I do Jackbox too. It's fun though I've learned that Macs sometimes have audio sharing issues. Yeah, I was doing Jackbox on Tuesday night and I had that issue where like, I couldn't hear the game as much. Like I could hear the participants through Discord, um, but I couldn't hear the games. Yeah, that's one of the challenges too, is just technology issues is definitely a challenge with online gaming programs <laughs> um, or Wi-Fi <laughs> when it just shuts off or it just slows down. <laughs> For sure. Uh, so yeah, uh, does anybody else want to contribute anything about why libraries should be considering online um, gaming? I'd like to contribute. This is Yunyi. Mm -hmm. Hi, Yunyi. <laughs> um, hi. hi. Um, well, 
this is all pre-pandemic. We had a, a tabletop game, um, and then this is to kind of also a, a game night. It was only once a month, um, partly because of space issues um, with our programming. Um, Princeton, um, prior to the pandemic, was heavy in in-person um, events, and so actually getting our community room was almost... Yeah, it's like a yeah. You basically have to book it out way in advance. Um, but um, and it, this one was actually even though I I uh, I didn't write this in my um, uh, when I introduced myself, but I am in the uh, youth services. But actually, before that, I was in lending or or circulations, and um, I had started a um, working with the programming librarian. We we started a, a tabletop game a spe uh, night specifically to target actually to adults, not to teens. Um, and I, I just wanted to say that it is very, um, I mean, it was a very small party, um, but it, they were consistent. And like, when I mean small, like for us, small is like under 10 or 12, um, because, mm -hmm. you know, PPL has the standards that they have <laughs> anyway but it was a consistent group and i think the way i was able to promote it is i was part of the local meetup group the game meetup group that met somewhere else um and i because i was able i knew the organizer i had him promote our event on his meetup page i don't know what the rules are on um you know depending on how your library likes things promoted uh, that may or may not be an option but that, um, but it was really, it, it was mainly to kind of get adults in a group that, um, age group that don't come into our library because we get a lot of kids. We're very fortunate being downtown that we get, uh, we're actually like less than a, a half a mile to the high school, so we we don't have a problem getting teens to come in. I mean, right now because of COVID, that is a challenge. But like prior to that, we were overrun by children, um, so and teens, and so that was just a way to get. A, an area of what you know and with adult programming was mostly older adults and not this like you know 30 40 year old because a lot of them if they do use a library they kind of do it on um like e-lending e they don't really come in and um but it was nice to have i mean just like um how i felt about the um the ga um, game group um separate um from the, um having uh, run it as a library employee was it was a great opportunity to meet a, um, a cross section of adults that lived in the area that were interested in games and it's all varieties of abilities. Um, and it's unfortunate because COVID did kind of killed all of it. Um, and so I'd like to bring it back, but, on the, but to answer um, one of your challenges is why I'm focused on online is I do think that I'm trying to like, you know, because I am in youth, it'd be nice to find alternative um, suggestions for the teen librarians to utilize among and, and also to kind of get teens that are not part of our uh, advisory board, other teens that are not as interested in being part of the advisory board in a leadership position to kind of be able to engage with the library in a different way. And then also with the adults is up, you know, in probably in a different type of programming to kind of get them to be like, you know, like bring the library back into their lives in some ways, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I do think that they're busy, but also a lot of people are still hesitant of coming into the library physically. Mm -hmm. oh, and sure. until the weather yeah, is better that. and the numbers are further down, um, yes. uh, maybe online is just kind of the, the way in. So. Yeah. Sorry, that was the, <laughs> no, I'll jump in and say, you you, I, talk. I think you're so right because I'm yeah. like, I guess, what am I like an elder millennial? Is that what we're calling ourselves now? <laughs> um, so. And, you know, my husband and I, like we have two little kids, our friends right around our age have little kids. We're working, we're busy. It's not as easy to take the time to go physically to the library and attend a program or attend an event as it is to just be able to jump on online. And like people said, maybe my kids are noisy in the background, whatever, I can turn my camera off or, you know, it's the ability to participate. I think even setting aside youth services for those of you guys who are looking, who are from adult services, like there's a, there's a definite market there, I think for people who um, it makes it more accessible. And yeah, oh, sorry, go ahead, Melissa. I know I, I said my comment in the chat, but I did, I just yeah. love how you said 
you worded it like bring the library back into people's lives because everyone is re-entering mm -hmm. public spaces <laughs> uh, at their comfort level and it's really great to have um something that engages people that does not require them to you know push their own their boundaries i i guess mm -hmm. um yeah sorry go ahead no that's awesome and it's it's one of the reasons why for example here at the trey hill library we've kept a lot of our team programming hybrid is because I found during this time is that I've reached so many teens I've never even met before who've never been to the library mm -hmm. who didn't know that the library does stuff like this like online gaming and they feel like they can be a part of the library without necessarily getting there for for whatever reason maybe they live on the other side of town and can't get here and it's the same thing with adults maybe they don't have a car or you know they just have a really busy work day they can't they, they have to be at home or maybe they have kids or something and uh for sure uh, online programming and online gaming uh, definitely does provide access and a level of comfort in where you can turn off your screen if you have to or just mute yourself if your dog is barking or something um, but still feel a part of something uh, so that's awesome i'm i'm glad we have some great positive takeaways to maybe like argue for online gaming if it ever comes to that um defending it at your library but we'll talk a little bit about that also and i love that this inspirational quote was already in the canva template i didn't have to go <laughs> looking for it um i don't know who nolan bushnell is i had to look up who they were uh some someone that has something to do with video games but obviously you see the quote here video games foster the mindset that allows creativity to grow. And yes, uh, that's definitely something with online gaming too, like games like Minecraft or games like Animal Crossing where you get to inspire or create or design. Um, there's creativity there and you give that opportunity to your patrons through programming. But don't forget, it's also an opportunity for you to be creative. Uh, you get to design these cool programs. You get to use uh, use them in an interesting way um, to get people who might not otherwise be interested in library programming interested. Uh, so everybody gets to be creative, both you and your patrons, uh, when it comes to online programming of any kind. Um, um, I just want to so, jump in, Jess, yeah. before we go to the next slide. I, I have been keeping, I see people in the chat um, saying, you know, they're not familiar with platforms and they want to learn more about the platforms that everyone here is mentioning and that there's, you know, people have specific questions like, I want to figure out how to get uh, better at Twitch or how to lear learn how to Twitch or whatever. So I'm just, I'm, I'm writing them down and I'm, I'm sure we'll circle back to them during our share, but in case we don't, I'm going to keep track of them um, in case I want to make sure everybody gets like their questions answered, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so just to give you a little bit about, you know, what we're doing at the Cherry Hill Library and why we're here and why we were interested to hear from all of you and talk about this with you is, yeah, we have been experimenting with online gaming uh, since the pandemic started. Um, Melissa actually has started Animal Crossing at our library for us, and I'm so thankful because Animal Crossing does require a lot of time to really develop the game and make an island that's worth visiting. Um, so we have that program that's still going strong. We open the island every other Wednesday. Uh, we've been doing Jackbox games like some of you have as well. Um, and Jeopardy Labs is something that I'm experimenting with Jeopardy for teens. I'm still trying to decide if it's gonna be like in-person or hybrid or we're, we're always experimenting. And I feel like that's what you do at the library. You experiment, you try, you keep trying. <laughs> and we do have a Discord server to communicate with teens directly, not just about games, um, but when it comes to online gaming, Discord has become like the convenient vehicle for facilitating the gaming. Um, so like I said, we have Animal Crossing open hours. It's a very passive program where what's great about it is that anyone who has as our switch friend code and has an online subscription can visit us. So I've had people from like across the country visit our library and are like, I have a secret I'm not actually from New Jersey. I live in California. I was like, oh, pinky girl, I don't care. Welcome. We're <laughs> glad you're here. And they became like a regular regular visitor. Uh, we open it up for two hours every other night. We've experimented with how often to open the island um, because uh, later on we'll, when we talk about some challenges, I'll talk about some of the challenges we face with Animal Crossing. Um, but yeah, all ages are welcome, regardless of where you are, as long as you add our friend code and you have your own 
um, online subscription, which is also a barrier uh, in terms of access uh, for online gaming. You, you do need to pay for a Nintendo online subscription. And in the Discord, I do have chat threads for anybody who wants to share Animal Crossing stuff, friend codes, items, whatever. It's not used all the time, and they don't have to use it. It's just there if they ever want to use it. And that is obviously for teens only. So this is actually me sitting in the teen space of um, our little Animal Crossing island. Uh, the character is Melissa's favorite character from the game in the back. <laughs> A little bunny. Oh, my beloved. <laughs> oh. Um, <laughs> So we do have game nights with Jackbox through our Discord. The reason we use Discord is because it's like Zoom in that you can turn on your camera or your mic to communicate with each other. Uh, we started the Discord. It was Melissa's idea, which I just kind of like ran with it. I was like, this is actually a really good idea. It's like an online community for our teens at the library uh, where they can talk to each other about anything, um, including games. So we've done Jackbox games. I just had that on Tuesday night. Uh, we've done Among Us, and we've also done Scriblio, which is an online drawn game like Pictionary, basically. Uh, it's free. The only annoying thing is like an ad that pops up as soon as you open it. But then once you get past that, you're just having fun drawing stuff. Uh, you do have to be a team to join our server, at least. So they have to email me first to let me know what school they go to and what grade they're in. And then I send them an invitation. And a work in progress is, I mentioned, Jeopardy for Teens. They actually shared that previous resource with me, Jeopardy Labs, which is like a Jeopardy board template. And I know some libraries, some librarians do Jeopardy virtually where, you know, you're all on Zoom and you have the Jeopardy board up and there's something they can do to be like, I have the answer or whatever. Um, but it's also something we're thinking about just doing in person. Um, but online gaming can be video games, it can be computer games, or it can just be a board game or a tabletop game that you do online. <laughs> like you've taken a traditionally in-person game and put it online. So Melissa actually did like a hybrid-y, um, what, what was it, draw off? <laughs> I did. Yeah, which was kind of like a cool online game to me. <laughs> it was fun. We had them, I said, uh, I want everybody here to draw SpongeBob SquarePants from, with no reference. Um, and I had a few kids in person and we had a bunch of people on, uh, on zoom with us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was really fun because the kids in person would like gather around like the, the, <laughs> uh, the camera to like show each other the, the drawings that they made and then like vice versa. Uh, it totally worked out great. So if anybody has any questions about like sort of running that kind of those kinds of gaming programs that are like, hi like truly hybrid, um, mm -hmm. let me know. Yeah. So this is what we've been doing. Um, we're, as Melissa mentioned, we're also ex uh, experimenting with Twitch. I just learned how to uh, screen record um, my our Nintendo Switch because I'm hoping to do uh, island tours and like me building stuff on Animal Crossing and putting it on our team's YouTube channel. I was very invigorated this week when I realized I can do this. I know how to do things. It's like very satisfying when you thought this super complicated technological thing was going to be so hard, but then when you watch enough YouTubers do it, you're kind of like, I can do that. <laughs> so it took some experimenting, but I figured out how to do it. I'm very excited. So that's, that's another benefit to online gaming is like when you finally pick up on something that you didn't think you could do, it's like, yes, <laughs> I can do this. Uh, so let's talk about it as a group. Um, some of us have put it in the chat. Some of us kind of mentioned it in our introductions. But, you know, what are some online gaming programs that you're doing right now? Um, and are there, is there anything relevant that you're exploring? Like how we're exploring with Twitch and the YouTube and streaming and stuff like that. Um, anybody, unmute or put in the chat. Or even if you're like, what is Twitch? Like we can, yeah. we can totally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We need to totally go into that, too. If we can take it back to basics. Bringing classic. Board game arena. Keely, I have never heard of that. Um, Ooh, online board portable. games. We might want to look into something like that. That's yeah, cool. especially. I should talk about board game arena, if anyone. Cool. Um, yes, please, please do. I'm a board game person. <laughs> board mm -hmm. game arena is basically the online version of that. Um, so, like, they don't have Ticket to Ride because I think of a licensing. But they'll mm -hmm. have like a lot of popular board games. I'm trying to think like um, 
uh, what am I, like Hanabi, which is a cooperative game. Um, um, you know, um, I, I kind of put myself on a diet with Board Game Arena recently, so I'm drawing a blank on what they had, but it's actually I'm looking expanded it up. a lot under, um, under um, since 2020, because a lot of people who used to play board games was starting to meet a lot of people online with their yeah. friends so that they can continue the board game nights on board game arena. Um, the nice thing about it is the graphics are really good. They have actually a lot of links on rules and whatnot. So if there are people who really like classic, uh, like, you know, more like the European style tabletop games, um, board game arena has a, a big chunk of it. Like I think they have like Puerto Rico and stuff like wow. that. So that's cool. what board, board game arena is. I'm looking through the game list right now and I'm seeing, I mean, obviously they have like Chinese checkers, they have backgammon and like that kind of stuff. But I also see Flux, which is a game that I used to play with my teens. Like they loved it like way back in the day. <laughs> um, this is awesome. I'm looking for like some of my faves, but I might have to just like, I'm looking for like Catan um, and like, oh, cool. I know one of Sorry. our colleagues- Carry on. One of our colleagues, uh, I think like a year or two ago, um, had sent out like that list of nostalgic online games that you can now play online, like Oregon Trail and stuff. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I was like, you're bringing That's... me back. <laughs> I love oh, that though. The last from the past. Yeah. Tabletopia I love it. on Steam. I what is Tabletopia? Tabletopia? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, like a document with the games would be a good idea because there are some things that do require mm -hmm. like some kind of payment. There are some things that are totally free, mm -hmm. like Scriblio was easy to do because it was free. Everybody could just, yes. you know. Jackbox, you need to buy. Yeah, Jackbox, one, at least one person has to buy it, but then like everybody else just accesses the game through mm -hmm. their phones and puts so in a gaming code. Maybe if I couldn't bother Jasmine yeah. and Melissa for an additional ask, Maybe they can help me put together a document that I can share out with you guys yeah. that has some of those basics in it. Oh yeah, that for should sure. be totally fine. Okay. Do you learn everything through YouTube? It's honestly the easiest thing for me um, with anything. When I was learning how to do the setup for screen recording Nintendo Switch, I was like, I have to see someone do it. Um, <laughs> so that was really helpful. And I just watched actual gamers teach how to do it because those are like the people that I'm trying to like emulate as a librarian like the like the vibe and the aesthetic that they give is like a gamer on youtube or streaming um because i know that's also what like the, at least the audience i'm serving i know that's what they understand and they get it um they're like oh you're doing like that thing that that gamer does on youtube i'm like that's exactly what i'm trying to do <laughs> um but it's what they know uh scribble was very fun but couldn't get many teams to show up to that i had i was really popular for a while and then it kind of like got quiet so in the same way, you can only get consistent attendance with Kahoot. That's awesome. Kahoot is, is kind of like another Jeopardy kind of thing, right? But do you have to set up your, now I've seen some of the kids playing that, but do you always have to come up with like the questions and everything for that? Are they all like, are there, are there pre-made game Kahoot games that the teams actually yes. like? Yeah, I can, I do Kahoot every month for way too many months at this point. And um, there are very, there, it's kind of like crowd sharing. There's tons of thousands of pre-made games in there. Mm -hmm. So you really kind of have to vet them before yeah. you put them on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Cause it's some, some pre-made games, you can give the kids 20 seconds to answer the question, or some people who make games give them 60 seconds to answer a question. And if you're waiting around 60 seconds for your kids That's to answer questions. <laughs> well, I mean, forever. that would be a good thing to have in the document too. Like Kahoot, maybe a list of some of the best, the top best like five or something. Templates. Um, yeah. You know, especially for yeah. those of us like me who know nothing. <laughs> Yeah, and that's okay. Yeah, I the t it's my teen advisory board who was like, oh, we should do a Kahoot. And I was like, a what? And I was like, wait, I have to learn how to use this. I was like, can you guys just do it? And they're like, oh, okay. So it's been really beneficial for me because the teens know it. 
if they want they me know to how to play it because it, it's, it's mm -hmm. built by teachers it's built yeah. it's built by teachers yeah, it, exactly. you can do, do trivia with it but there's lots of true false mm -hmm. you can set it up so they can play the game on the on their own and it just it's just open for two weeks or however long you set it up mm -hmm. and that you can see how many kids will participate over a long period of time like a week or a month or you could just do a live game yeah and that would be cool to do with adults too like you could do some kind of like jeopardy or kahoot or something like that um some people just i know something a teacher would do is like to make their own jeopardy board they just make it in like Google Slides, and you can just like link to slides for the questions and answers. Um, so there's there are ways of doing the program you want to do, but on your own terms, <laughs> using what you know um, and know know what works. But I know for me, like I said, I have the Teen Advisory Board, and they've been very um, instrumental for me in making these gaming programs happen. Or like. With Melissa helped me set up the Discord, but then the teens also were like, hey, can we make a thread for this? Can we have a dedicated thread for this or whatever? Like they had good suggestions, or I was just like, I don't know how to do that. So can you show me? Or can you do it? <laughs> um, like well, with obviously if you do, supervision. <laughs> if you do, like, let's say if you're talking about like PowerPoint questions or something, and then mm -hmm. if all the kids are doing screen sharing, how do you, like with Jeopardy, isn't it usually like whoever hits the buzzer first? And answers correctly is the winner. So how do you how would they do that online? Yeah, does anyone have know? A, yeah, that's a great question. Does anybody have like a suggestion for what you would do if you were doing like online trivia or online Jeopardy? Because this will be great for me since I want to do this program too. If anyone has suggestions. I mean, like on Zoom, if you were doing it on Zoom, you see all the faces, it would be hard to know who's doing what quickly, quick enough to say, okay, so you had your hand up first, or you rang a bell first, or yeah, but even with the hand raised, like, would you see it quick enough to say, oh, okay, it was Jasmine that raised her hand first? <laughs> or, or you could do it by the chat, too. Like, you could have somebody monitoring the chat. Um, a lot of times during programs, I have one, at least one volunteer who's like monitoring something mm -hmm. for me. I'm like, I can't do this at the same time. Can you do this for me? And they say yes. So sometimes it's a volunteer or if you're partnering with like a staff member uh, for a program. So like that's one workaround for that. Yes, Je Jeopardy Labs does have a lot of pre-made templates as well. And it's similar to Kahoot where it would be good to just like vet it first, make sure information's right and also it's like appropriate for whoever your audience is mm -hmm. is there anything else that anybody wants to share that they're doing at their library or they're exploring i'll click the next slide though just to keep us visually interested because <laughs> we have talked about some of these things um some of the learning experiences that we've probably faced in implementing any kind of online programming. We've talked about technology. We've talked about like that issue with Jeopardy where like, how do you work around that? Um, uh, Kelly said, we've been doing online D&D for a while and it's the only thing my teams show up consistently for. That's awesome. Uh, we've, we've, so you have it online. Do you have, or who is the dungeon master for your online D&D? I'm just curious. For us, we have an outside person who does it, but um, it's in person. But when we did do it online, um, I forget who was the dungeon master at the time. You, that's you. It's awesome. Co DM was with your team. Uh, oh yeah, that's Jazz, right. It was Matt did it. Matt's my husband. That's why. <laughs> that's right. Name basis. <laughs> he did it online throughout the pandemic, and um, our tab member Rachel was doing the kids D and D, uh, and and moderating and uh, DMing for that during. And I suppose we'll be working out with our um, uh, the, with the independent person who we contact if if we ever need to go back to online again. To see mm -hmm. if they would be interested in doing it. Mm. Boy, with book Seven signed up, two came for an intro to D and D. Two's a rough. I mean, <laughs> that's my least favorite amount of people to show up to a program. I know. 
<laughs> I'd rather just have a nice one-on-one conversation with one person than have two people show up and be like, so, <laughs> here we are. <laughs> a struggle. Um, <laughs> let's see. Presenter was amazing. We don't have any staff who plays anymore. Yeah, and that's the hard part. Sometimes with staffing, sometimes especially Mm -hmm. during a time like this where maybe some libraries have a lot of turnover and like you kind of like lose an expert or lose a really helpful colleague for a certain program that's tough that can be really hard um i'm i'm really lucky to still uh, have melissa with me uh part-time to support me but it's been really i've been very fortunate to do some of the programs i'm doing and i know some librarians don't always have that um so i am grateful Uh, it can be tough uh Promotion, uh, promotion and game engagement. Yeah, with attendance, it can be, it's it's so, it's just interesting. It, it fluctuates still. It's like, it reminds me of in-person programming where it still fluctuates, where you'll have, yeah, like 10 people signed up, but maybe only like half or less than that come in. Have you all been having that issue with like online programming too, or hybrid programming or in-person programming if, you, if you're doing any in-person programming? Yes, can be linked to a sole librarian. Yeah, sometimes it's the contact. It's the contact. They're the ones that coordinated everything, and that's what made it easy. I was also just curious if anybody, um, it comes an issue. Like sometimes when we were doing in person gaming, the kids would want to bring their own games for the, like the Nintendo or whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, so sometimes my, my branch manager didn't want us to do that. And then sometimes she would say, okay, but it had to be, uh, what is it, E for everyone, or mm-hmm. right. you couldn't yeah, have M, right. or like the, the rating was what was what mattered. Yes, I used to do a lot more like, in my in my day <laughs> before <laughs> all of this happened. I did have, I had like a Super Smash Brothers night. I had like a Mario Kart uh, night, like open gaming hours mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, and we never really had... I'm interested. I wonder what it would have been like for if we had kids, but I did allow people to bring their own games, but for the most part, they just wanted to play our games. Um, so um, uh, I hadn't thought about that, that like you might run into like content issues with uh, with that kind of, so I always said, feel free to bring your own games and controllers because we sometimes yeah. ran out of controllers. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's been a while since I thought about that. Um, I don't know. It just seems like virtual is the way forward for these, these kind of gaming stuff, at least for us. So I, I don't know how other people feel about that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm curious to know how people are promoting virtual programs. We recently, this is what Kaylee is saying, recently have had to move back to fully virtual and our attendance numbers have dropped dramatically. Mm-hmm. Um, I know for us, that's where, aside from social media um, for the teens, uh, which has changed a lot since the pandemic, I've been doing a lot more with it. Um, but also the Discord, because I have the Discord community, it's like direct access to teams where I'm like, hey, you picked this day for Jackbox, you better show up. Um, <laughs> that, but it, it is like we have an announcement thread where I announce programs as they come up. And one, uh, similar to the reason why I do hybrid programming or online programming with teens is because of that whole access issue where like they might have a club after school they thought they were going to be busy and so they don't sign up at all but then like last minute see me drop like the zoom meeting in the discord and they're like oh yeah wait i can come and then they can just like instantly join um the discord has been really great for like last minute signups um so i don't know if you have any kind of platform uh where you can do that kind of like instant announcement but that's what's worked for me at least yeah it does look like um, like Melissa says in the chat, I would say that outside of the Discord, social media, and the weekly newsletter for us oh, is yeah. similarly. We yeah. do have a weekly e-newsletter, um, and our our PR person will do like a push, like the week mm-hmm. of for any programs that look like their registration is not so great. <laughs> yeah, and that really does seem to help. Um, Jasmine, do you think it would be useful for me to share uh, what our Discord looks like to this? I have yeah, I was just concerned um, about showing names and stuff, like if I anybody, know. yeah, I, I mean, to take, like, so a they can see, like, the threads we have, though, I get it, yeah, I was, I was going to put, like, a screenshot, 
um i was just unsure of like showing like the, the, the kiddos actually talking to each other not kiddos especially since it's being adults. recorded i guess okay yeah do um, you guys want to take a screenshot we can blur out the I, names and we can share it when we send the email with yeah, the other yes, resources so people can see what a discord yeah, so yeah, what it looks like, like if that's yeah. helpful it's yeah, like a big group. It's like a big group chat. If anybody keep adding things to your list, Jasmine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, but we also have um, we have a mailing list just for teens. So um, it's there. You might have maybe you have a targeted mailing list just mm -hmm. for people who are interested in online gaming. Um, I work really closely with our PR person. Like I said, I'm very much in charge of the teen social media. So I have a list just of teens just for teens who are interested in teen programming um but not, but a targeted mailing list for anybody who's interested in gaming programs maybe that'll be helpful too um but that we do use constant contact for that but uh, melissa suggested a tiny letter which might work for smaller libraries that's awesome i've never heard of tiny letter mm -hmm. cool. and then access um, is something that I always think of with online gaming programming, programming too, because on the one side, it is accessible for a lot of people who have Wi-Fi, who have devices. So obviously, Animal Crossing, like I mentioned, has barriers wherein that you have to have a Nintendo Switch. You also have to have a paid online subscription. For some people, it's not very expensive, but for some people, it's just another thing to pay for. Um, and, you know, on their own have to decide if that's worth it or not. So we do have a paid online subscription for Nintendo Switch um, so that I can do Animal Crossing. Um, and then another challenge, um, which I actually mentioned in the NJLA newsletter article that I wrote about Animal Crossing in libraries, is that because of Wi-Fi issues at the library, I have to run Animal Crossing from home which is why I have designated days and times for this program. Um, I don't know, have any of you had those, like any of those kinds of barriers or issues with any kind of gaming program or online gaming program? Jasmine, is that because the Wi-Fi is just not sufficient to keep up or? Yeah, I think it's because you have, because like a Nintendo Switch, I don't really know how to explain it, is not the same as like, logging in from multiple computers I don't know I don't know how to explain it but when I tried it from inside the building I just tried to get I think Melissa or one of my other co-workers to just come to the island while I was inside the library it wasn't working like they're like I can't see your island from the choices or I picked your island but it's not taking me anywhere um, and I wouldn't get on my switch the notification like hey somebody's trying to come to your island um, it was very strange and it kind of made sense when I realized that from the beginning, Melissa had started the island from home. And I was like, oh, yeah. So, so then when I took it over, I was like, oh, I think I have to do this from home. <laughs> but it did require some, like, trial and error. I had to, like, talk to the IT person here. And they tried to, like, make me my own Wi-Fi network to try. And that still didn't really work. They called it, like, the switch network, too. I was like, yes. wow, I have my own switch network. Unfortunately, it was still unsuccessful. <laughs> so, but that that was a, a struggle for a little while. <laughs> and so, with that is also scheduling, because that means there's a chunk of a day or a chunk of time that I won't be in the library. So that's a staffing thing too. Like there are lots of like little obstacles that resulted from like one notable <laughs> obstacle in the program the running of the program hmm. oh yes melissa our our guest wi-fi we have staff a special staff wi-fi and library wi-fi as well because of our guest wi-fi having i guess stability issues maybe is the best way mm -hmm. to put it yeah <laughs> yes yes yeah so any games even if you're doing them in the library and you, you might run into issues with, with that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, just based on what your internet connection is like and how stable it is. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious, some of these games that you do that are sort of open, like you said, your Animal Crossing would be open to 
anyone really, right? Mm -hmm. Do you guys ever run into like, I don't want to say security issues, but you know, you're working with Mm -hmm. teens, you're, you know, do you ever run into problems where people are trying to come into your online games or onto, you know, to communicate that maybe shouldn't be there? Uh, I, what's nice about Animal Crossing is that it has like a chat feature and it kind of like filters out, it like knows, it has like its own built in kind of like security thing where like people cannot say inappropriate things. I was like, I don't know how it did that. It just does it. Um, but have I, I've also just had kind of like uh, players who kind of like chase me around <laughs> the island where I'm like, trying to do stuff or they, they just keep like asking questions in the chat I had one youth um, I could tell just from the way they were typing their messages be like let's have a fishing contest let's have a fishing contest let's have a fishing contest <laughs> um, and at one point I did have to say I said hey whatever their nickname was um, you know if others want to have a fishing contest with you they can if they don't want to that's okay too <laughs> so and then I still posted- do too. Yeah. Um, then you posted conduct rules on the mm-hmm. animal, on the little. There's like a bulletin board that you can post yeah. messages to your visitors mm-hmm. to on in Animal Crossing. Um, I would say that another thing that makes it easier is that the chat feature in mm-hmm. when people visit your island is fully public. Like, if you send a message during an Animal Crossing visit, everybody on the island can see your message. So you're not able. People are not able to pull people into private conversations in Animal Crossing. Um, and everybody is going by like monikers or whatever. So like the interactions that are, ha- that are happening are not conducive to, I guess, sort of, I, because my mind went to like, oh, people might try to like, try to like grooming people or, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. they, but well, that's why really I asked not, that question, right? Because you right. would imagine that there are some, you know, people with ill intentions out there who are going right. to take advantage of a situation where, you know, here's a chance to interact with whoever. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. It's not easy to meet people through Animal Crossing. <laughs> yeah. Guess, is what I'm trying to say. Like, it is fun to to be with other people on an Animal Crossing island, but it is not a place where you're going to make a one to one connection with people. Mm-hmm. It's, but it's also very hard to type into that chat. Um, yeah. I will say. <laughs> uh, just, it, I'm not going to get too hard into too much into it, but the the keyboard with the Switch controller is not easy. To, you can't type long messages. Let's put it that way. It is you the can na- type fishing like, contest, yeah. fishing contest. Yeah. And, it. <laughs> yeah. and it's the nature of the game in that it's meant to be a wholesome game. It's meant to be a sweet game, um, very charming. And uh, so I don't find that most people try to use it for whatever reason, like nefarious reasons. Um, but I have had to consider for like Jackbox games, some of us do Jackbox games. There are some games that you do have to turn on like a family filter like a family kind of setting Mm -hmm. to make sure that like inappropriate trivia questions or prompts and stuff don't come up. That's something that I've had to deal with where one of my tab members was like, don't forget to turn off or turn on the family thing. Again, how blessed to have a volunteer tell me that (laughs) because I am not knowledgeable of some of these things. Um, uh, And then, like I said, for the discord that they have to email me first to get an invitation. I don't, unless it's one of my teen advisory board members, nobody else is really allowed to like invite someone else. Um, But there, I find because it's a community that knows this is for them, they're very respectful of that. I have rules in all of my threads uh, for the discord saying like, you know, respectful language, you still have to follow our patron code of conduct and I link to the website. Um, You know, everybody is at the whim of the admins who will be looking out for, you know, bad language. I actually have a sensor bot installed onto our discord server so that if anything, even like a little bit like inappropriate is caught, it'll like take it to what is called the swear log so that I can evaluate it and see who said it. Um, But yeah, there are some, you know, security things that we have to consider just like with zoom Mm -hmm. and all of that. Uh, uh, we've never, oh, sorry. You know, no, 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 no. Are you looking at the chat? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Joey, I know, I see we only have five minutes left too. So I want to get to everybody's mm-hmm. comments and questions. Uh, Joey asked, have we ever had teens type inappropriate things into Jackbox, like as answers in Jackbox games? Um, when I was running it, 
no is the answer to that um mm -hmm. and jasmine i don't know i feel like you would have told me if something like that had happened yeah uh, but we would most likely ban them or kick them out um because like mm -hmm. jasmine was saying we have like we would probably or we probably have to like make sure the next time to post like our conduct rules basically um it's one of those things you can't prepare for if it happens it happens and then you just have to be like okay you're out um mm -hmm. because we have like rules for keeping everybody comfortable i guess yeah um is that how you feel too yeah, I feel the same way. And it's the same. It, that can be all ages. That's children. That's also adults, too. Like, you still have to be respectful of, just like it's an in-person program, you you still have to mm -hmm. be respectful. Like, this is an online space that mm -hmm. is facilitated by the library. So, you know, patron code of conduct still applies. Um, and they know that. Uh, at least our teams do. Um, I haven't yes. really had to discipline anyone. Um, or the censor bot does it for me on Discord. So... <laughs> I usually just remind them, Kaylee says, I usually just remind them that we need to keep our answers library appropriate. Yes. First offense is a warning. Might result in being kicked kicked off the Discord. Exactly. Yes. You yeah, have we've never those. had to kick anybody out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have actually had somebody, somebody we did have an experience. Talk about where, Isaac? No. That's a funny <laughs> experience too. But one of our tab members, somebody hacked their account. Um and they were posting uh it was so funny too because at our tab meeting I mentioned I was like you haven't been on the discord in a while and they're like oh yeah and then the next day somebody hacked their account and was putting like inappropriate just like swear words into the discord and the censor bot was catching every single one of it and all of the other teams in this the discord were like whoa who that what's going <laughs> on um but it, after a certain number of times it automatically kicked them off the discord server um and then I talked to the team about it and said hey did this happen they were like oh my gosh I'm so sorry that wasn't me like it better not have been but yeah we've had those uh situations happen online i did also didn't know you could make a custom quip flash that's really cool uh quip flash if you don't know what jackbox games is quip flash is one of the games you can play and it's like um there's like a prompt and it, there's like two people who come up with like a funny answer for the prompt and then the audience has to choose like which one they think is funnier uh so i didn't know you could do like a custom one that's pretty cool yeah, that's really cool. Two and, oh, Jackbox two and three. Which ones do we have, Jazz? We have seven oh. and three, I think, oh, and okay. maybe four. Okay. I forget. But that's a really I'm good idea good. for like mm -hmm. themed programs or themed months or something. Um, like you that said, like a Star Wars quick flash. That's really cool. Um, these are just some resources like that you could read. You don't have to. I, I, I felt like just the discussion itself is like a big resource. Um, but I will say, YouTube gamers are great for inspiration, like I said earlier. <laughs> <laughs> like, from teaching you how to set up the technology to just, like, the vibe and the aesthetic of, like, online gaming, they're really, you know, it's you, you don't have to be the expert at everything. Um, I have very happily given up control to, like, Melissa or one of the teens, and I'm just like, I don't know how to do this. Help me. You don't have to know everything. Um, it, it's technology, online gaming, it's a really great chance for you to just explore and try new things, especially now that our world is very, like, hybrid. <laughs> like, everything's hybrid, not just programs, but just, like, life. Um, so does anybody want to share some of, like, their best takeaways today or something they're excited to try or maybe a problem solution that they're hoping might be helpful that they picked up on today? I'm excited about this custom quiplash. I really didn't know you could make your own. Yeah, same. Um, yeah, so since we are running short on time, I'm I'm happy to keep the um, room open for a little bit if anybody has questions or things they want to share. But since some people might have to go, mm -hmm. um, what I will do is, uh, you know, once the recording is up on the YouTube channel and I have all the resources ready, I will make sure that I email everyone who registered um, with all of that information. So I'll ask Jasmine um, to share this uh, presentation with me, if that's okay, so people yeah. can get the resources. Mm -hmm. And then I think what we'll do is um, perhaps um, Jasmine and Melissa can start a document with some of the information they've shared and we'll make it editable for everyone so that if any of you guys who obviously have such great ideas feel compelled to drop it in there and help some of um, your less informed colleagues, that would that would be really nice. We can just make it a living document so that everyone can share their expertise. Does that work? Yeah, it's a great cool. idea. Okay, um, so, so ideally you will have everything tomorrow, but 
you know, nothing ever goes ideally. So if not, <laughs> look for it early next week. Um, and thank you all so much for being here. I really appreciate it. I'm going to end the recording now and say thank you and keep an eye out for our next skill sharing conversation, which is um, later this month. And it's on um, building positive patron relationships. So an entirely different topic, um, but still, still a valuable conversation. But if you want to stay and hang for a little bit, if you have questions or comments, um, if Jasmine and Melissa have a minute, they can hang as well. If not, we'll see you guys soon. Thanks for coming, everyone. Yes.